JMS Flower Farms has been helping grape growers protect their vines from insects and fungal diseases with their exclusive product, JMS Stylet Oil, since 1992. Visit www.stylitoil.com today. Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Vegetables West Magazine, reporting to you here today from the annual meeting of the California Tomato Growers Association. I'm here with Bruce Rominger, chairman of the board. I wanted to talk today about, you know, how this how this last season went and what are our prospects for, for the coming year. In 2018, the, the processing tomato industry had a great year as far as farmers growing a big crop. The weather cooperated with us. We had the record yields, but nobody at the end of the season was very happy about it because financially we're in a squeeze right now and the market is not rewarding us with, with what we think would be a fair price. And primarily, it's, there's some macroeconomic reasons here. We have a strong U.S. dollar, so the exports have been difficult for the processing industry to move those tomatoes. We have extra capacity. There was capacity, processing capacity built in California in the last five years to export tomatoes when the market was there. Now the market's not there and we have excess capacity. So we have too much inventory in warehouses, so processors are being squeezed. Um, their margins are being squeezed. They're pushing that back on growers, so we're not getting enough money uh, to get uh, what we think we need to have a good crop. So we're looking at labor issues, we're looking at the, the export issues that are squeezing us. And so California growers, we, we like to look forward to a nice season, but 2019 is looking like quite a challenge. Um, who knows what our crop will be like because the reality is the weather is still a, the biggest factor to determine how we do at the end of the season as far as the yields we get. And so we're going to do everything we can as growers to cut our costs. Every grower in California, not just tomato growers, is trying to eliminate labor, mechanize as fast as we can because the labor costs are skyrocketing in the state. So we're trying to eliminate people on our farm so we can have a chance of making a profit. But uh, we're, we're, it's going to be a challenge this year. Right, right. So what, what, options, what options can growers do you know, to, to well, cut costs? The every grower, there aren't that many processing tomato growers in California. There's 230,000 acres. Maybe, I don't know if there's 300 growers left or not. But we are all trying to look at new technology you know, we're looking at more efficient irrigation systems. We're looking at larger pieces of equipment so one employee can do more. We're looking at faster equipment. We're looking at, you know, uh, obviously drone sensing technology. We're looking at robotic weeding technology. We're looking at all this stuff. But, you know, these things take time to develop, time to become economic. Um, you know, we're still transplanting most of the tomatoes in the state with people sitting on a planter putting individual plants in because the technology has not reached a point where it's economical for us to do it with a machine, uh, entirely automated. We're getting there. We need to get there really soon because that's a huge cost for us. Um, we're trying, but it has to all be at make economic sense. We don't use technology just for the sake of technology. We want something that'll make us money. Right. It's so. got to be economical for you. Absolutely, yeah. Well, thank you, Bruce. Thanks for the update. Read more about the, uh, the proceedings of today's event in the coming issue of Vegetables West magazine. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgnet.com.